uh, NBA. The Celtics wrapped up the best record in the NBA April 3rd. The playoffs don't start until April 20th. So they're not the most focused team right now. Maybe that used to be the case. But the NBA has changed, and here's one of the things that's become noticeable over the last three years, four years. Jay Mack and I, I think you've touched on this. The three-point shot not only rules the world, but if you're an offensively gifted team, Golden State, uh, OKC to me, Boston, you can play poorly and have a big fourth-quarter surge of threes now that five out of five starters can hit them. It's a life raft on bad nights. So teams like Boston can mail it in, get outplayed, and have a five-minute run late third quarter and end up blowing out a team by double digits. That wasn't the way it was in Barkley's day or Shaq's day. The Lakers may have had one three-point shooter, maybe two, a Kobe, a Derek Fisher. Or, or in Barkley's day, he could hit a three-pointer. Maybe Cade, Kevin Johnson could. But uh, it, it's different now. Teams go on these massive runs. I mean, we had an NBA team with Kevin Durant and Booker on it that trailed 34 to 5 at home this week. You regularly see in the NBA a team down 20 early and they win by 10 late. It happens all the time. And by the way, I love Shaq, but he was perpetually distracted and Barkley was not known for laser focus either. Michael Jordan had criticized him to his face and behind his back saying, you're just too distracted. You're not committed enough. So the Boston Celtics led the NBA in blowouts. They were 39 and 11 against the East. This is human nature. They take their foot off the gas. It happens all the time. And it happens all the time in the NBA now. So when I look at Boston, my issues with Boston aren't because aren't, the top five or six teams in the NBA are a mile ahead of the bottom 10. This is not the NFL where you may have Carolina's really awful and maybe one other team's a mess. In the NBA, 10 teams at the bottom cannot compete with the six teams at the top. It's not even, the rosters aren't close. And so my takeaway is, in the three-point world we live in, when you wrap the best record up 17 days before the playoffs, it's not like the Knicks are a bad team. The Knicks are a playoff team, frankly, better since Julius Randle got hurt. They're better. And so I get it. And I, and I don't think it's a lack of care. I think it's a reality of the three-point shot. So I think it's a little bit more than just that. And this whole idea of going through the motions, since the Celtics are locked in place, they're one seed, all that type of stuff, going through the motions is exactly what they should be doing. They should be preserving health and energy. Basketball is an absolute marathon, okay? And it is. The season is exhausting, and the playoffs are exhausting. Go ask LeBron James. Um, you know, they are exhausting, and they wear you down. And so you want, if you have the chance to go through the motion, still stay sharp, still keep your identity and the flow and your rhythm going, that's all that matters. The wins and losses at that point do not matter, okay? It's like when you're when you're practicing, it doesn't really matter, you know, if you're doing five and five or whatever, like it doesn't matter who wins. It's just as long as you're doing the right things. And so you are going to step off the gas because you want to preserve your energy. And we see this um, specifically in weight training, okay? Um, if you're like a competitive weightlifter, whether you're a strong man, you know, like the stereotypical strongman that you see them lifting, you know, like trucks and stuff and doing all the crazy stuff or power lifters. Okay. If you could lift and I'm, I'm using made up numbers here. If you could lift, you know, 500 pounds, a bench press, you know, 500 pounds. Okay. That is your max. And that is the weight that you plan on trying to a bench, um, in competition. Okay. You now four weeks out, you have this period where you are not lifting 500 pounds. You are doing a lot less, a significantly less. And you are little by little tapering up. So by, by the time you get to competition, it's now time to do 500. You're not doing 500 pounds, you know, week one and then week two and then week three and then week four, right? You, you taper up. Because again, and in, in especially in weight training, you have something what's called deload. You work out, work out, work out, work out, work out, work out, and then you need to pull back because you get this cum cumulative fatigue. 
I think a better way for people who maybe aren't, you know, well versed in this, who haven't maybe played sports competitively or don't weight train, who maybe don't understand this concept, to give it like sleep. Um, you could go a day or so, a night or so, without getting the best quality sleep, right? Now, I only got a few hours of sleep, or whatever, right? But you can kind of rise to the occasion, you know, you, you run on adrenaline, cortisol, all that type of stuff. But then if you continue to not be able to sleep and you keep getting short, short, you know, short sleep, it catches up with you. And eventually you feel fried and you're tired, you're irritable, you're exhausted. You know, you just, just nothing seems to be going right. That's this type of fatigue that these guys get from playing sports throughout the season. It just starts to be, you know, this cumulative, you know, wearing you down, whether it's both mentally, physically, your joints, it's everything. So the Celtics are in this amazing position where they can now not only reduce the risk of, a, oh my God, he just rolled his ankle. This is a disaster. But now also like I can take, I can get off my feet. I don't, you know, I can, I can relax mentally. And then you, you know, the fear is that they're not going to be able to flip that switch, but these are veterans. These are guys that have played in competitive spots, yes, they may have not won the finals, but people like Tatum and um, Jalen Brown have been to the finals. Like they've they've been there, so they do know what it takes, um, you know. And so I, you have to trust that like this is the process, this is the way to go. This is similar to LeBron taking plays off in the middle of the game to extend not only his career as a whole, but also his energy within a game, so he can expend it when it's needed. And it's worked well for LeBron clearly. Um, and so this is, to me, what the Celtics are doing. Um, so yeah, going through the motions makes sense and is smart for what they're to do. In fact, it's what you do when you do a deload, which I was talking about with weightlifting. Like what a deload is specifically, let's say you can lift 500 pounds. Your deload week is you now lifting like 200 pounds right? If you could lift 500 pounds for 10 reps, you know, there's different ways to do it. Like if you can lift 500 pounds for 10 reps, there's some deloads where you lift 500 pounds, but you only do it for a couple of reps, or you do 200 pounds for 10 reps or something, right? There's all these different kind of variations that you can do, but it's just your light lighting, you know, lightening the load. Um, and it, again, it recharges you mentally, physically, your joints, like it just, it's what you need. You can't just go, 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 it's how you crash and burn. Um, and so I, what the Celtics are doing, they're in, a, in an incredibly fortunate situation. Again, there theoretically is that risk of you now being falling out of rhythm, um, not being able to flip that switch of intensity, and now you're just, you know, you're screwed. But with basketball, since it's a seven-game series, there's a lot less of a risk of that. Because even if you come out terrible sluggish in that game one, or even game two, you drop the first two games, you still have other chances to go to go out there and do it right you still have um five more chances to to get the job done um so i would just say that that's where um you know you have to kind of pull back and look at the look at the bigger picture in that regard but those are just my thoughts i would absolutely love to hear you uh hear yours uh do you think the celtics are just going through the motions or do you think you can trust them come time the playoffs. Let me know in the comments below. I read every single comment. So whether you agree with me or disagree with me, either way, let's get in some discussions. Let's get in some fights, but ultimately let's just have some fun. And please do consider subscribing. We are building an amazing community here and I would absolutely love to see you part of it. I want to build something that we all genuinely feel connected to, something that we're really excited to be part of. And I think we're well on our way to doing it. And please don't forget to give this video a thumbs up. It really does help with the visibility and the algorithm, and it helps combat all the haters, and the trolls. Thank you so much and see you next time.